I was in my last year of primary school. In fact, my family paid for the expenses for his ordination. At the time, he was my best friend. He had a lot of time for me. He was very funny, very charismatic. And to me, he was like my first, second or third parent. I trusted him completely. And I thought more of him than I thought of my parents, I believe. The abuse started when I was between the ages of 10 or 11, and it was continuous from the time I was maybe 13 to 15 years old. I was embarrassed, and it was a secret that I would keep. But I was well and truly into the cycle of abuse. I knew it was wrong. I knew it was a secret, but the abuse kept happening. I felt thoroughly, thoroughly ashamed and also thoroughly angry that someone could groom a youngster, a 10-year-old boy, into such a way to actually thinking it might be wrong, but it's still happening. I was at the doctor's, and the doctor suddenly noticed approximately two years ago that I was feeling worse and worse, and I was looking more and more down and depressed, and he recommended that I go and see a psychotherapist. During the session, the psychotherapist asked me, said, were you ever sexually abused as a child? And I said, yes. But to actually say yes to that for the first time in over 45 years, just to say one word was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. I couldn't say it without closing my eyes. I started admitting very small amounts of the abuse. Just, you know, there was someone who was touching me and I had to touch him. I didn't have the courage or the strength to admit to the level of the abuse that was happening. I knew there was something wrong about that time, but it was the best kept secret. It was something that I didn't want anyone to know, that I was abused as a child. I didn't want anyone to know that I was abused by a priest as a child. I contacted a charity where it's non-recent victims of priests. They said to me, we can help. You find a link to Thames Valley to actually report the crime. I knew there were other victims because Father McDermott used to spend quite a lot of time bragging about his conquests. So it wasn't just like a secret that he kept to himself. I feel exhausted, but I feel relieved that he was convicted. This person has taken away my self-worth, and I believe this person should be in prison for a long time. When I first admitted the abuse, I believed everything was shame and embarrassment, and I was disgusted with myself, and I was disgusted with what he made me do. But as I've had more time to reflect, I realised that he actually took away a part of my soul. He took away my footprint wherever I go in society. He took away the inner confidence. And I think really the biggest thing he did is to take my self-worth. I think that is even bigger than the embarrassing things I had to come to terms with. He even had the audacity to plead not guilty. Because I suffer now from depression and anxiety, that takes a large part of my day. Luckily, I have people around me who support me but I always imagine every day what my life would have been like if I didn't have such a psychological injury which he imposed on me. And I wake up every morning knowing that some of my dreams have been reflecting about my self-worth and the psychological injury as well, every single day. My advice would be take on a demon, but know what you're taking on. It's a very difficult thing to do, but it's a very satisfying thing to do. I was getting more ill month by month, year by year, and eventually it just had to come out. And I realised how many years I was suffering in silence over this. Seek professional help and contact the police. Just to say the one word yes to call of my courage. It took so much of me. It will be difficult, but it's worth it in the end. I believe the truth will prevail and I believe these people need to be reported. The more people that stand forward and report them, 
the more there is an awareness that this society has this disease going on.